So I'm going to try something um, a little different with this video. And instead of just talking about the restoration, um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the history of the Ohio Tool Company, which is one of the major plane makers of the 1800s um, while I do this restoration. Uh, this is a jack plane marked Scioto Works, which was a brand that the Ohio Tool, tool Company used. Um, 16 inches long. Your your basic standard jack plane um, from the 1800s. Uh, it's in pretty great condition. It's dirty. We're gonna want to um, clean up the the dirt off of it. The wedge is in in great condition. The uh, fingers on it look like they're brand new. Um, the strike button is totally deteriorated and will need to be removed and replaced. Iron is is pretty rusted. Um, it'll take some of vapor rust to to get off all that uh, to get off all the rust, and we'll need to um, regrind the bevel on it and do some other work to it. Um, but it should clean up pretty well. So let's put that into some vapor rust for 24 hours and start working on the body. Usually use just paste wax and a rag to clean up uh, old planes. Um, this one's a little grimier, so I'm gonna use some Murphy's oil soap and some extra fine synthetic steel wool. You don't want to to be sanding it. You don't want to be grinding it um, with something really abrasive. You just want um, something that's a little uh, a little rough that'll take off the dirt. Um, and, and that's as far as you want to take it. Um, anything else, you end up with you know, a pretty weird looking plane. So there's some confusion about when the company first started but based on my research i think the ohio tool company didn't exist until 1851. the company made claims um, in some of its advertising that they've been around uh, in 1840 or all the way back to 1823 um, and even a guide to american wooden plane which is like the bible of of wooden planes um, says that Ohio tools may have existed in some form uh, as far back as, as 1823. And I'll get to where those earlier dates come from in a bit, um, but I think you can confidently say that the Ohio Tool Company didn't exist before 1851. Uh, and even the incorporation of the company is a little confusing. <coughs> Ohio Tools started in the same building in Columbus, Ohio, uh, as another plane maker um, called Hall Case and Company. Uh, and the Ohio Tool uh, Company founders either bought out the other company or took over. Um, I'm not sure exactly how the transaction happened, um, but they ended up with uh, all of Hall and Case's workers and Hall uh, Case and Company's prison labor contract. Um, so back in the uh, mid 1800s, uh, early 1800s, a number of plane makers used prison labor. Um, and I betting it was as controversial back then as it is now because um, it gave companies an unfair advantage. You know, I mean, it was essentially just free labor, uh, well, almost free labor. Um, so not counting the prison work, um, Ohio Tool Company had somewhere between 100 and 200 employees when they started. Uh, 100 of those workers came from Hall Case and Company. Um, so they hit the ground running uh, and were quickly one of the major plane makers in the US. So you can see here how um, that the strike button is just um, 
totally deteriorated. It's just completely rotted out. Um, I'm not sure why. Um, if you're not familiar with them, you use the strike button, you hit it with a mallet, um, and that loosens the iron um, so that uh, if you need to reset the iron or remove the iron from the plane, um, you give the strike button a quick wrap and it, uh, or a quick smack, and it uh, and the iron is loosened. Um, so I'm just going to take an auger bit here and and remove the old one. Uh, and this is this is where I messed up. Um, I thought that I had measured this correctly and was using the right sized bit, but it was too big. Um, and as I began to use it, it started to cut around the edges of the button rather than just cutting out the button itself. Um, and I thought it was going to be okay. And I finished it using the, you know, used to put in a new bit and cut out the, uh, uh, cut out the old button and replaced it and just realized that it looked like crap. So, uh, in a minute, I'll show you that I cored out the new button and replaced it with a slightly wider one. Um, still didn't look 100% great, but it looked a heck of a lot better. Um, so you can see here that I've cut out um, most of it. Um, and then I just used a screwdriver and was able to pop out the, uh, the rest of it. Uh, I mean, it was just so rotted. It, it just all came out really easily. Um, but I think you can see this, you can see that ring around the, the outside. Um, and that's from using too, too big of a bit. So before I put in um, the new button, uh, I'm just going to use some some wax, um, some paste wax to protect the 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 wood. Um, I don't like using boiled linseed oil. Um, I know that's popular with a lot of people who restore uh, these planes. Um, uh, I don't like how it looks. I don't like how it darkens the wood. Um, it just uh, uh, it just is, is not, um, I think it's just a step too far. I don't think you need to use that. Um, so a little paste wax. Um, and like I said earlier, a lot of times you just need to use paste wax and a rag to, to clean up these old planes. Um, it doesn't need um, anything more than that a lot of times. So once it is all waxed uh, and looking pretty good, uh, if you ask me, um, we don't wax the, the sole yet. We don't wax the bottom because the next step is to flatten the sole. Um, it's not possible to get it 100% flat. In fact, if you tried to, it would open up the mouth um, really wide and you don't want that. Um, in fact, the mouth of this plane is, is really wide already. Um, and you just don't want to make it any wider than it already is. So, um, what I'm trying to do is just take down any high points that are in between the toe and the heel, uh, So I'm just using a piece of tile um, and some, I think some 220 grit is what I used. Uh, and just some spray adhesive sprayed on. And 
as you can see here, it's already very flat. Uh, so it's not going to need a lot of work. So you can see that the on the right side is a little high up by the toe. So I'm going to need to flatten that. Um, but everything behind the mouth looks pretty good. So I'll just gently try to take the high spot down a bit. And that low spot right behind the mouth is fine. Uh, I'm not worried about that at all. So the other thing that, the uh, last thing we're gonna to do to the body is we're gonna flatten the throat. I wanna make sure that the throat is flat. You want the iron to be snug against the mouth um, and you want it to be snug against the top of the throat. Um, and you just wanna make sure that there's no high points in between the two, um, the top and the bottom. Um, and like with the sole, there's no way to get this perfectly flat. Uh, but you just wanna make sure that there's there's good contact at the top and the bottom. There's nothing, there's no high points in between. So now let's work on the um, strike button. Um, the dowel that I had was a little too wide. Um, so I use a poor man's lathe here and sand it down. Um, I wish I would have just gone with a bigger dowel in the first place, but eh, that's the way it goes. So once I had that down to the correct width, um, I decided to use a little bit of um, wood stain on it. It's just cosmetic. There's really no reason that you need to do it. Um, but the, the fresh wood would look, I think, a little funky. Um, with the rest of the body. Um, so it's just a little stain. So back to the Ohio tool story. Um, their main product was woodworking planes, uh, wooden planes, but they also made metal body planes and transitional planes. Uh, and they made plain irons and chisels, knives, concrete tools, gauges, workbenches, a whole range of stuff. Uh, and the 1850s, 60s, and 70s were peak years uh, for the company. They were the largest plane maker in the company, or excuse me, in the country. Uh, I don't know what their output was, but it must have been considerable. Um, but by the 1800s, or excuse me, by the 1880s, business had dropped off. Uh, they were down to like 70 employees. Um, they stopped using prison labor at that point. Um, so this is where I am replacing the new button with a newer button, with a bigger button. Uh, just cut it out and added a new one in, just like I did with the last one. So 1880s, companies not doing great. Um, on the wooden side of the company, or the wooden plane side of the company, they were competing with the other major plane maker of their time, uh, which was the Sandusky Tool Company. And on the metal plane side, they were competing with, with uh, Stanley. Um, I don't know why they didn't see the writing on the wall and try and take on Stanley. Um, but instead, they doubled down on 
wooden planes, and in 1893, they merged with the Auburn Tool Company from New York. Um, now that they, we've left the iron in and the chip breaker in, uh, the a vapor rust overnight, um, this rust all comes off very easily. Um, I know some people don't like the darker tint that a vapor rust leaves um, on on irons. Um, I think if it was a collectible, you'd want to do something different than the vapor rust. You don't get that dark tint. Um, but I think for a user plane, uh, it's totally fine. Um, yeah. So the Auburn Tool Company has its own interesting history. Um, they also use prison labor, um, and they were one of the founding members of the Plane Makers Association, which was a group of plane makers that organized together to fix prices. Um, this is in the late 1850s. Um, so kind of an interesting a little footnote in the history of of plane making in the U.S. Um, if you ever see the New York Tool Company mark on a plane, that was a brand used by Auburn. Uh, they also marked their irons with the Thistle brand. Um, and after the merger, they continued producing, or Ohio Tools continued producing irons with the Thistle brand mark. Um, so they're they're fairly common. So once I get the iron and the chip breaker um, cleaned up, I started sharpening this and realized fairly quickly that uh, it, needed, it needed a new bevel. Um, so off camera, I used a belt sander and flattened the back of the iron and put a new bevel on. And you can see the you can see that right here. You can see the new bevel that I put on it. Um, and once that was, once I got the new bevel, I took it to the 300 diamond plates and then uh, flipped it over to the 1,000. Um, in a pretty short period of time, um, It was, had a pretty good um, had a pretty good edge on it. So the two companies merge and they keep the Ohio Tool Company name. Um, and it looks like the metal their metal planes were made in Auburn, New York, and the wooden planes manufacturing stayed in Columbus. Um, that's just a theory. Um, and at, at this point, so this is 90, what, 93, um, they started uh, selling two lines of wooden planes. So the higher grade of planes were sold under the Ohio Tools name, and the lower grade uh, was sold under the Scioto brand, which is what this plane is. Um, the irons in both planes were the same, but the wood quality between the two of them was different. It was a cheaper, um, the Scioto brand had a cheaper quality of wood. Um, either way, that they must have been very popular because there's a lot of them out there today. They're very common. Um, there was also another brand that, I, that Auburn and Ohio Tools used. Um, the Owasco Tool Company, um, but I don't really have any information about what that was or, or why they used it. So once I have the iron sharpened, um, use the strop and the obligatory, obligatory um, shaving, hair shaving, show how sharp it is. 
Um, and then I also, you want to make sure that the edge, the leading edge of your chip breaker is um, completely flush with the iron um, when the two are connected. Um, so when you're restoring these, um, you always want to take and um, just put a new edge on it. You're not trying to sharpen it. Um, you're just trying to make sure that there's a really good marriage between the iron and the chip breaker um, so you don't get shaving stuck underneath the chip breaker. Um, so that's a real quick, real quick thing you want to do. After that, uh, all that's left to do is put it together and put it to work. Um, I tuned it up and sharpened it before I put the new, the new, new strike button in. So if you look at it, you can see how kind of funky it looked before I replaced it. Um, first, we'll use it on the edge of a board. And looks it's cutting very well, um, pretty thick shaving, um, but it's uh, very, you're not getting any chatter, um, and yeah, it looks good. So from there, um, <clears throat> moved on to the face of the board. This board is cupped, uh, you can't really tell when it's lying flat, but it's higher on the edges than it is in the center. Um, so uh, I'm going to reset this iron. So despite the merger, uh, Ohio Tools was on its way out. Um, the Columbus factory was wiped out in a flood in 1913, and they opened a new plant in Charleston, West Virginia a year later. Um, I don't know if that was, I don't know what happened to the Auburn plant at that point. Um, but by just a couple years later, 1920, they were out of business. Um, so what's the deal with Ohio Tool claiming to be older than they really are? Um, like I mentioned at the beginning, they had advertisements claiming they were um, founded in 1840, um, they were founded, there's another one that says they were founded in 1823. Um, I found some great research that was published in the Midwest Tool Collectors Association newsletter back in 2006 that showed that the 1823 date was just referring to Auburn's predecessors. Um, it had nothing to do with the operations in Columbus. So the 1823 date is just ad copy. It's just a date they used to make themselves look older than they really were. So there you have it. Um, that's the story of the Ohio Tool Company. Um, this plane cleaned up really nicely, um, looks good, and works really well. Um, aside from the chips missing around the strike button, uh, it, all, it all worked out pretty well. I will go in my pile of planes to sell. Uh, and yeah, thanks for watching and goodbye.